Okay, so first up is the YouTube app. Just to warn you guys, I'm a big fan of this app, so I might have a nerdgasm here and there. Because in my opinion, the YouTube app layout on the iPad absolutely kills the new YouTube layout that we see on our desktops and notebooks every day. The new video page layout, eh, could, could use some major work in my opinion. Anyway, let's launch YouTube. Upon launch, we are introduced to the featured page, self-explanatory, bunch of thumbnails to the featured videos. We touch one. For instance, let's do Lego Matrix Trinity Help. Let's turn the volume down a little bit. Actually, if you hold down the volume button down for a couple of seconds, um, it actually mutes. So there's the video, and as, as you can see, the iPad screen allows us to see so much more information than we could ever see on the iPod Touch and iPhone versions of YouTube. Guys, this is amazing. The video is playing up here, but we still have plenty of room down here to read the info, related videos to this video, more videos from this user, this video looks pretty sweet by the way, and comments, which is a big deal to me, and yes, you can add comments while watching. Huge, huge deal in my eyes. So if you tap on the video, you are presented with options such as add. You can add this to your favorites if you want to. You could share this. I keep on missing there. Share, which brings up an email. But if you click cancel, it goes right back to the app. So it's not like it, you know, ends everything. You can rate this app. Let's just give it five stars because it's pretty cool. We can flag the video, which I'm obviously not going to do. And of course you can play. You could scrub back. You can go full screen, then rotate to fill up the screen, most of it anyway. We can click done here, and here is the landscape view, which is probably even cooler. Now the video is on the left, and the comments and everything are on the right. It's very cool stuff. So down here we have options to enter into top rated, self-explanatory, for all this week and today top rated videos. Most viewed, favorites, actually let's play a quick favorite video, um, Yoshi's Story, Happy Song, if you guys watch my live stream you'll totally understand the humor behind this, I just thought this was funny, and of course if you double tap it, it scales it, actually not, not this video it seems, because it's already filling up the screen. So, yeah, anyway, to avoid copyright infringement. And then you can also go to playlists up here. I don't really use playlists on YouTube, honestly, but it's cool for the people who do. Then down here, subscriptions, I can actually check on the videos that I subscribe to. For example, let's click on, or touch rather, A to Blossy, my good friend Alfred. And he has plenty of cool videos. Then you just touch one. And it, start, it starts playing full screen automatically if um, you're in landscape mode. It takes a few seconds to buffer over Wi-Fi, but the quality looks amazing once it's playing. And here it goes. And of course, if you double tap, it'll fill the screen, but it will crop off the footage. So just just as a warning, this is Thanksgiving 2009. I don't know. Let's get actual footage here, then I'll show you what it looks like. So there you go. There's Alfred. It looks amazing. And then if you double tap, it will cut off the content, as mentioned. But it's really not bad to the point where I would never double tap a video. So, pretty cool stuff. Touch done. And of course, over here, related videos, more from comments and all that good stuff. And you can also sign into YouTube, obviously, hence all this information being displayed. But what's even cool, well, cooler, or whatever you want to say, is my videos, if you want to watch your own videos or check your comments for instance here's my iPad unboxing if you're interested in watching that it's pretty much instant buffering it's pretty impressive it is April 3rd. and there's my iPad unboxing and I'm like touch done just like the previous videos I just showed you guys comment section and I can always rotate it back there it goes and down here let's do the last one that is history. Basically shows you the history of videos that I watched. For instance, here's the iPod Shuffle unboxing video I have. I really, really like this layout. This is my favorite layout, by the way, portrait, because it gives you all this extra room down here, as mentioned earlier. It's really cool stuff. 
I was really, really impressed by this application. And that is the YouTube app. Alright, so next up is the iPod app. We all love our iPods, I know I do. Let's open it up. And you may recognize this layout because it looks very similar to iTunes, which I really like. Again, because of the iPad's large screen, we are capable of seeing so much more information. For instance, play buttons now appear, and we can go through our music. Now, I don't, I don't have all of my music on here, so I have much, much more music than this. Um, here's a playlist I have, Halo 3 ODST. The game was alright, but the soundtrack's amazing. And we play a quick song. Avamar comes up, and of course, like all the other apps, you can rotate. Tap that. You, you get all this information up here. You can turn the volume up if you wanted to. By the way, I gotta say, the speaker on board is actually pretty impressive. It's 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 not amazing, but it's definitely more impressive than I expected. And then if you want to go back, touch the back button down here. And here's iTunes in landscape view, which I think looks even better. Alright, so now down here, you may see this. I'm not sure if the video is picking it up. We have songs, artists, albums, genres, and composers. Pretty self-explanatory. It shows you um, the information, whatever you touch. So let's go to Eternal Sunshine, amazing movie, and here's the theme. Stop that so I don't get sued. You can add playlists on here now, which is pretty cool. So I'll call this iPad. Actually, that bothers me that it's not capitalized correctly. And as you can see, typing on here is very easy because the keyboard is like extra large for a touch screen. And save. So now there's the um, playlist and we can add music by touching. Oh, no. One. There we go. It added. And it fades when it adds. So click done. And there's the music. Click done. And of course, you can edit. You can delete this from the playlist if you wanted to. But here's um, Ethan Mars' theme from Heavy Rain. Amazing game, by the way. Everyone has to play that. Awesome, awesome game. And, of course, it supports Genius playlists. So if I touched... Let me see. Married Life from Up. Awesome song. I don't know if it'll find music based on it. Oh, it did. Then you can touch Play. Oh, actually, it's playing that. I'm sorry. Touch Married Life first. There you go. Now touch next. Final Fantasy. More Final Fantasy. And all that good stuff. So now if you want to refresh your playlist, you can. And I think that's pretty much it. I'm trying to cover everything. Oh, also, um, I don't think I covered this in, in the other apps. But all of Apple's apps, as far as I know, have a search function of some kind. So if you just touch search, and for instance, I'll touch, uh, I'll type Final for Final Fantasy, and all the songs containing Final come up. So here's Sign from Final Fantasy VII, Advent and Children. Another amazing movie. Alright, I think I showed enough. Again, if you guys have any questions, just say so in the comments section. The next app I'm going through is iTunes. Not iTunes Player, iTunes meaning the iTunes Store. This is basically the same exact iTunes Store you see on your iPhone or iPod Touch. Um, nothing's really that different, it's just things are changed to... Um, Sorry, I just hit the camera. To make up for the iPad's large screen. So there are our selections. We have featured, top charts, genius based on your music. Down here we have movies. Give that a second to load. It's usually pretty fast. TV shows. Modern Family. And that little transition happens, which I think is pretty neat. And then if you wanted to play a preview, let's go to the newest episode. Actually, the newest episode is based on the iPad. So if you touch play, it'll show you a 30-second preview in full screen. I can fool you. Then your teachers can fool you either. Pretty cool stuff. And then, of course, if you want to exit this, you simply tap outside of the box, and it fades away, taking you back into the store. So down here we have podcasts. I love podcasts. Real quick, let me give a quick plug to Dignation. If you guys are looking for an interesting podcast, definitely check out Dignation. They typically talk about technology, but have fun doing it. Um, it's very explicit, just to warn you. But it's a great, great podcast. I've been watching it for years. 
So here's Kevin's Day from Hell. If you wanted to, we could play a preview right here. Takes a few seconds to buffer. Now this is a quick time small version, but if you go full this screen, it st still looks pretty good. TV, Red Steel 2, and the Man Sack. Man Sack. How appropriate. Um, Shit into the bugs. And then, oh, the there you go. Bug with the and as you can see, pretty explicit language, as I said, but oh well. It's not like we haven't heard curse words before. Alright, so cancel out of the search. And here's the podcast view. Audiobooks. Audiobooks are a pretty big fad lately. Although I shouldn't say fad because they're here to stay, it seems. So it's pretty cool. iTunes U. Pretty much a bunch of um, lectures from universities and all that good stuff. Top charts up top. No pun intended. And then down here, downloads. So if I were to download something, I don't really feel like down. Actually, hold on. Let's let's download something free. Let's go back to Dignation. Um, touch that. Again, just for demonstration purposes, this is free. So let's just uh, download this. Get episode. I thought I'd touch away from it. I didn't mean to do that. There we go. And now, as you can see, it dropped down to there. And downloads now has our download in there. And if you wanted to, for whatever reason, you could pause your download. Just like in iTunes on the Mac or PC. So it's really cool. And and if you swipe, which I actually just found out just now. You swipe it, the delete function comes up. And there you go, your downloads are clear. And I think that is everything. That is the iTunes app. Alright, so the final app I want to display real quick is Maps. I, I won't take your time up too long because I've already talked way more than I wanted to. Let me just say, apps, apps, yeah. Maps is beautiful on the iPad. I cannot say this enough. The large screen enables for a much more interactive experience. This is Mars. Just kidding. It's obviously Earth. And it's very, very fast at rendering. Now search. Uh, you can type in whatever you wanted to. For instance, New York. New York, New York. It'll drop the pin. And it does support street view. So you tap the little guy you see right there. It'll automatically zoom in and show us the street. Which is pretty freaking sweet, if you ask me. This is nothing new. But again, seeing it on a large screen just gives you that new kind of feeling. And of course, just like on a desktop or iPhone or iPod Touch, you could turn around, you could zoom in on uh, that guy. And, yeah. That's interesting. They blurred out people's faces. I didn't realize they actually did that. It's pretty cool. And if, and if you wanted to go back to Maps view, simply touch the map in the bottom right. Now, directions. I set up a... Uh, hold on, let me see. If you were okay, if you were to go from Orlando, Florida to New York, New York, which is pretty freaking far, it's one thousand and seventy nine point six miles, about eighteen hours by car. You could touch start and it'll start start your route or route, depending upon whatever you say. Touch next and it'll take you through each step. And just just like on the iPhone, if you touch this page corner, it brings up hidden features. We have classic, satellite, Hybrid, whoops, and terrain. Uh, we can even drop a pin. We can view the info of that pin. We can even view a street view within that pin, which is pretty cool. So all, all this stuff is actually saved on the fly, which is pretty nice. Go back to the map view. You can remove pin. And I say the best for last. Well, not best, but maybe one of the coolest features for last. And if you turn on traffic, go back to the map. It'll actually display the current traffic conditions, which I think is a great feature if you have to um, drive a far distance to work or vacation or wherever you're going. And as with all the other apps, super responsive. Look how fast this thing is rendering. This thing is flying. I'm really, really liking the iPad.
anyway, I could talk for hours about maps because it's such a fun application just to explore, just to um, go from street to street or town to town if you're bored. And Oh yeah, also down here. If you're doing directions, you have the choice of displaying the time and um, miles in car, transit, or by foot. So if you were to walk from New York, New York to Orlando, Florida on foot, and you're crazy in the head for whatever reason you're trying to attempt that, you can see how long it takes. However, if you see right there, it says no walking directions to New York, New York. So I guess this map has more common sense than the person searching for that option. Okay, so that's it for the Maps app. Hopefully you enjoyed that. My next video up will be covering Safari, Mail, App Store, and way up here, the iBooks app, which I can promise you right now is amazing. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in my next video.